Okay, uh, folks, can you hear me? This is Abhishek. Yep. yep. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Great. So, welcome to uh, EC5759. I'm going to share my screen and go over the syllabus of the course. Uh, all right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, of course, uh, we have been running this course for a long time and every time it was an in-person class, but this year because of the pandemic, uh, we are running it in a completely online asynchronous mode. Um, I've been teaching this class for five years and for the last three years, I have recorded all the videos and uh, you probably would have already seen that the videos for uh, 2019, 2018 and 2017 offerings are already available on YouTube. Um, but the video quality for 2019 videos are much better in comparison to those of 2018 and 2017. So um, I would highly encourage you to um, look at the videos of uh, autumn 2019 uh, for the entire course because it's much better quality. But in, in a couple of lectures, the audio is not recorded. So for that, for those lectures, um, if you if you go to the description of the video, you will see the link to 2018 videos. And so you can look at those 2018 videos. Uh, the prerequisite for this class is uh, 3050 or 5551. So 3050 is signals and systems class. 5551 is linear systems theory class. Um, and so, or state space controls class. And so if you have either of those two, if you've taken either of these two courses, um, you are, you meet the prerequisite for taking this class. So this is particularly true for undergrads at OSU. Uh, if you're a graduate student in engineering, math or physical sciences, um, you can take this class. There is no problem whatsoever if you're a graduate student. Uh, I think uh, based on the enrollment, I see that there are about 53, 54 graduate students taking this class and about five, six undergrads who are taking this class. So welcome everyone. Um, uh, one of the strong prerequisite for this class is a strong background in linear algebra. So I don't care where you learned linear algebra from as long as you understand uh, most of the concepts you learned in linear algebra class, particularly with respect to eigenvalues, eigenvectors, um, and so on. If you remember those concepts, you are good to go for this particular class. Uh, we will work a lot with positive definite matrices throughout this class. So that's why linear algebra is very, very important. Uh, and, you know, I'm, nowadays Python is in vogue, but, uh, you know, you can submit your assignments either in MATLAB or in Python, it doesn't matter. Um, um, so, so I, I'm not sure if everyone has access to MATLAB license. So can, can someone, uh, uh, I know it's a large class, so a lot of people may speak, but uh, do you guys prefer to use MATLAB or or Python, like anyone has a strong preference for Python among the participant? Okay, do I do see some chat coming up? Okay. Okay, good. So some people prefer Python, some people prefer MATLAB. It really doesn't matter as long as you use a, a reasonable programming language, uh, you can, uh, you should be able to complete all the assignments. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, so for, for access to MATLAB, I think you need to be connected to some university computer so you can use a MATLAB license from the university. And so I'm not sure depending on whether you are in Columbus slash out of Columbus slash out of country, I'm not very sure whether you will have access to MATLAB or not, but Python is available uh, you know, for free. So you can just download Python and you can use uh, Python packages to run most of the algorithms that you need to run for this class. Uh, I've also mentioned that the lecture notes by Professor Bertsikas is available on OCW. So of course the text, the official text for this particular class is nonlinear programming by Professor Bertsikas but his lecture notes are available on MIT OCW. So I'm just going to go to that website and, uh, 
and he has like a lot of different uh, stuff uh, on on convex analysis and optimization. But you know, it's different from nonlinear programming in some sense. But you know, a lot of the topics are similar in both the courses. So uh, at least some of the stuff you can find in this particular lecture notes. For others, you just have to look at the blackboard and copy the stuff um, in your notebook uh, in order to go through the contents of the course. Uh, of course, if you have access to this text, that would be amazing um, because then you have the you, you can just progress the text in a linear fashion uh, in this class. But uh, if you don't have access to the book, then you can you know, there is ample, since this is the first course in optimization, so there is ample number of references slash notes slash things available online for you to look at for individual topics. So if you look at gradient descent algorithm, you will see, I don't know, 500 different pages for gradient descent algorithm. And then if we move on to the Lagrange multiplier methods, you will see completely different courses. Uh, that will talk about Lagrange multiplier method. So there is ample amount of a material available online for you to see and understand if there is a problem with uh, uh, with any of the content covered in the class. Uh, of course, you're free to come to my office hours uh, in order to learn the material better or if you have any questions or concerns, you can discuss it. Or you can also send me an email uh, uh, for an appointment and we can figure out a time to meet and, and uh, discuss whatever concerns you may have. Um, I'm assuming that people are taking this class from different time zones. So it's not possible for the two time slots. There are three, three time slots for office hours, Tuesday, 10 to 11, Friday, three to four. And the TA is running an office hour on Wednesday, nine to 10. So I'm assuming this would cover, this would be appropriate for most of the students in the class, but if it doesn't work, just send me an email and we'll figure out a time for you. Uh, you know, don't, don't hesitate in sending me an email. Of course, if it was an in-person class, you know, typically I would answer a lot of questions before or after the class. Um, and then of course, office hours are also there, but, but in an online setting, it's very difficult to coordinate everything at the same time, at the same place. So. Uh, the link for the uh, Zoom is all available both on the Carmen web page. So this is the Zoom link for office hours for this class, you know, for instru for TA's office hours and so on. So this is the common Zoom link across all uh, the interactions that will happen over 575 for this course, 5759. So um, keep in mind the Zoom link or just bookmark it or something um, because you will need it quite often in case you want to attend office hours. Um, so anything else that we have missed out? No, we've talked about office hours course text. Okay, evaluation policy. So you guys are paying me to give you pain and suffering, uh, which is really good. Uh, so to increase your pain and suffering, I have six homeworks, three online time quizzes, two take home midterms and one project. Um, some of these assignments would require coding in MATLAB slash Python. You can choose whichever language you prefer. Um, I'm going to go into the project more carefully in the in in a in a while. So these homeworks, um, what I would expect from you is you write it on a piece of paper and then you scan it using Cam Scanner or any any other uh, you know photo photo capturing slash scanning technique you may have on your smartphone. And you can just submit the thing to, uh, you know, assignments. If you go to the Carmen webpage, you go to assignments. What happened? Okay. You can go to assignment one. And then there is a submission button. There should be a submission button somewhere. Uh, I, I don't see it in my view, but I guess if I... Uh, I'm sure there will be some submission button if you see it in your student view um, and you can submit the assignment on Carmen. Uh, this is how we have submitted assignments uh, every year. So that's how we will do it this year as well. Uh, the quizzes, so if you go to 
uh, assignments uh, you will find quizzes so quiz one quiz two quiz three uh, the due dates are already there of course you won't see quiz two and quiz three because i haven't published them yet but you will see them in due course of time when i publish them but each of them have deadlines which is these these are all eastern times so august 31st 12 midnight eastern time um, assignment one is due on september 4th 12 midnight eastern time and so on so you will see the dates due dates due time and uh, uh, and, and everything will be available within this assignments page uh, the midterms will also be announced right here so i'll upload the question paper and you can take a look at that and solve the assignments and then again submit it back to this particular um, page and then project topic and final project report so all of these are due uh, just go to the assignments page on carmen and you will see all these different due uh, assignments slash quizzes slash midterm slash project due dates and everything um, um, every the grading policy it will involve some sort of curving at the end of the course um, you know historically people who have uh, scored more than 90% aggregate marks uh, have received an a grade but of course things change from year to year so 90% is just the average number over the past several years that i've run this course uh students are expected to work on the homework now unfortunately i'm not sure how you can have you know study groups or something uh, i'm looking for ideas on how you want to have study groups so that you can help each other with the homework ask each other questions and things like that i'm just not sure how to do that uh, in an online setting but that really helps Uh, when you are taking a class, especially a class like five seven five nine, which is very very involved class, and it's going to take a lot of time. Uh, I, I have to be frank about it. So it's good to have some study group where you can discuss the assignment questions with other folks um, through Zoom or through Skype or through whatever other means you may have. Uh, I have opened up a discussion forum for unconstrained optimization, so you can always ask questions. on the discussion forum so if you go to the discussion forum um you can reply to this particular discussion and you can ask questions and i will reply to it ta will reply to it or other students may reply to your questions so that's also a possibility but this is an offline possibility and you may ask question now but you might get a reply after 24 hours so it's not really real time so I strongly encourage if you can form a study group for this class that would be really awesome uh to work on homework and project the project is individual project but you can still ask questions from other people if you need help um so because of the pandemic uh some of you may fall ill uh or your family members can fall ill and if such a situation happens uh please do inform me so we could figure out an alternate time for you to submit homeworks or or you know figure out whatever deadlines are approaching and how to manage those deadlines uh, this will all be handled on an individual to individual basis so i'm not going to make any blanket policy on uh, late homeworks or or uh, whatever certainly you can submit your homework much before the deadline so i'm going to upload all the homeworks now not now but in this week uh and you can go through the lectures the lectures are all available online so you can go through the lectures uh, write down your homework submit the homework before time uh but if you want to submit late because of some personal exigency do let me know and we can figure out a time i mean that's definitely not a problem in this particular class um the take home midterm one is on october 16 and the second take home midterm would be in november 20 uh the way it will run is i'll send you the question paper uh of course through carmen and you will have 48 hours to download it print it out you know write your solution and upload it back to carmen it would just be like an assignment but uh, you will have a deadline of 48 hours to submit it uh so we'll have announcements closer to time uh when we reach this deadline Uh, there is no final exam in this class and 
basically your project report would be the final exam. Now, what I want you to, so what I have said in all other classes and you, of course, if you have seen the videos, you would know what I'm talking about, but project report is an important component of this class and it can improve your employability once you graduate. And my goal as an instructor for this class is to uh, make sure that you achieve your goal by the end of the class. So now, what do I mean by that? Let's say you want to go and work for Amazon supply chain department. Uh, you want to perhaps work on a project that is related to supply chain management of, uh, I don't know, inventories, uh, you know, and, and, and when you work on the project, you will of course develop some ideas, you will develop some skills, which you can then write when you're applying to Amazon, you can write about it, you can brag about it, you can say what you discovered in the project and so on. It doesn't have to be a research project, but it certainly should improve your skills in that particular domain. So I've had students uh, working on optimization of sewage systems, you know, optimization of communication systems, optimization of uh, 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 additive manufacturing and, and so on and so forth. Like there's just so many different fields that you may want to pursue. Like, you know, the entire population of students taking this class might want to pursue. So I just completely leave it up to you to figure out what is the topic that is of interest to you that is relevant to your future uh, goals after you graduate from the university. And you may want to, um, you know, complete a project within that topic. Um, if you are more theoretically oriented, let's say you want to apply for grad school or something or, or like a PhD, or, or if you want to um, uh, conduct some research in optimization, you are free to also survey papers uh, in the field of optimization and, um, and uh, write a survey report on, on those uh, theoretical topics in optimization. So it's just completely up to you. And I want you to spend adequate amount of time to figure out what is the right project for you. And I just want to show you in the assignments tab, uh, there is a project topic due on September 25th. So you must submit the project topic that you want to, that you want to pursue in this class on by September 25th. Uh, what I'm going to do after 20, September 25th is I'm going to look at the topic and what problem you want to work at. And uh, depending on whether you need to meet me individually to discuss that project or not, we can schedule a time and we can have a one-to-one -one discussion about the project topic. So of course, because this is an asynchronous lecture, we won't have as much personal interaction, but I want you to, uh, you know, besides the office hours, I want you to use this project as a way to interact with me and make use of my, um, my knowledge in optimization to improve your understanding as well as you know, become successful in the future. All right, so I'm sure you have gone through the course description and topics that will be covered in this class. Uh, we'll talk about both static as well as dynamic optimization. Um, I have given a list of potential project topics uh, in mathematics, computer science, statistics, uh, electrical engineering, mechanical and aerospace operations, civil engineering, and so on. Um, you can, um, you know, use this as a springboard to identify what are the areas that you want to, um, that you want to uh, investigate in for your optimization project. And again, it's important because if you do a good optimization project, you can brag about it in your resume. Um, and at this point of time, these are the only ways to showcase your creativity to your potential employers in the future. Uh, so Zoom link is of course available, but if you want to use a phone to connect to Zoom, then there are, uh, this information is available in this uh, in course information sheet. Uh, uh, the, the EC department promotes diversity and, uh, um, and we don't, like to support racist activities. So make sure that uh, you are um, open-minded and work with people from all backgrounds and people from uh, different uh, uh, 
race and ethnicities. Uh, and if there is any problem, uh, definitely email me or you can directly contact uh, email equity at osu.edu. If you're facing any uh, mental health issues, uh, there is, uh, you know, uh, uh, OSU has a lot of different uh, activities around the campus. And now much of that is online uh, where you can uh, talk about your anxiety issues or any other problems and get counseling and consultation services. So definitely check out some of the links that are presented here. And then because of COVID-19 and so on, there are health and safety requirements if you want to be on campus. So make sure you, um, you understand some of these terms and conditions very well before you go to campus. I don't know if you've seen the news, but about 238 students have been suspended from this semester because they did not take adequate precautions while they were on campus. So even before the semester started, so I'm sure you understand the uh, gravity of the situation and you make sure that you take all the precautions in order to uh, not be suspended from the campus activities. Uh, Carbon requires Buckeye Pass, so you must have Buckeye Pass uh, authentication on your smartphone um, in order to access Carbon. Uh, what else? Some technology stuff uh, and, and other academic integrity and accessibility uh, stuff. So just read these things. There are a lot of links out here. If you have any questions or concerns, contact me. Uh, contact appropriate authorities within the universities and they will be able to help you out. Um, your mental health is extremely important, so don't feel very stressed. And if there is any stress related to EC5759, I'll be happy to discuss with you and figure out how to alleviate that stress associated with this class. But I have to tell you that this class is very difficult, uh, but students have found it extremely rewarding after they go through a lot of um, uh, ups and downs during the first few weeks of the course. Uh, they develop a much better appreciation for mathematics and much better appreciation for optimization. So I'm sure you will also go through the similar waves and, and hopefully you will learn a lot in this class. So that's it now that I have gone through everything. Now I want to take some questions uh, that you may have. So uh, please uh, enter your questions in your in the chat box and I can answer them one by one. If you have any questions, if you have no questions, just write no questions. Uh, so yes, so there's a question from Vivek, will everything for the rest of the semester be asynchronous? Uh, so yes, the lectures are asynchronous, but if you want to meet for office hours, that's synchronous. Oh yes, time quizzes. Okay, good, good question. So um, uh, quizzes are going to be one hour long. Uh, there are 10 questions in every quiz, so, uh, but you can take three attempts and the maximum of the three attempts will be, um, will be reported on the final grading sheet. Uh, what that means is, let's say you take the quiz the first time and you completed the quiz in 60 minutes, or you may not have completed the quiz in 60 minutes and you completed only eight questions. Next time you can repeat the same quiz, um, uh, and you can perhaps get, let's say nine marks. So in the next time again, you can repeat the same quiz and you can get 10 marks. So you can repeat up to three times. Uh, so you get 60 minutes each time and uh, you can, you know, change your answers depending on the feedback you have received from the first, uh, uh, whatever, from the first, uh, first time you have taken the quiz. So, so the maximum of the three attempts will be counted towards the final grade. Uh, let me maximize it. How long are we given for the timed quizzes? Oh, that's, I've already answered. Are you going to record new lectures? So I'm thinking of recording lectures on momentum methods. Momentum methods technically weren't part of the syllabus earlier. But recently, momentum methods and optimization have received a lot of uh, uh, excitement. So I want to perhaps record a few lectures on momentum methods and add it to the class. 
towards the end of the class. So it won't be part of the syllabus, but it will be uh, something new, which is an addition to the older syllabus. Um, as far as what's there in the current syllabus is concerned, it's already recorded. I don't see a need for recording it again, unless there is a specific need. And many people think that there should be new lecture recorded for some specific topics as recorded. But otherwise, the lectures have already been recorded for the course content for the last three years. So I don't see a need for recording new lectures this year. What are the topics from the syllabus we must cover for quiz one? Yes, so quiz one will be on. Uh, that's a good question. I'll probably uh, write it somewhere. So quiz one would contain material from lecture one and two. Uh, quiz two will contain material from lecture one to nine. And quiz three will contain material from lecture 10 to, I don't know, 15 or something. So uh, so I'll, I'll write it somewhere. What are the specific lectures whose material will be covered in the quiz? Uh, do you have any recommended materials to refresh our understanding about linear algebra because I took it lo so long ago? Well, I cover some of the preliminary stuff of linear algebra in the lecture one. I don't know if you've seen it already or not, but uh, uh, but uh, but if you need more material, send me an email and I'll uh, refer you to some books. Maybe I'll upload it on Carmen. So I'll just upload it on Carmen, some books on linear algebra, which is available online for free. and some recommended sections or chapters that you need to know before you jump on to uh, optimization class. Uh, so there is another question about no new lectures. It's hard to see Blackboard clearly in videos, even when I choose the highest quality. So I'm not sure which year you are talking about. So for autumn 2018, the Blackboard is visible, at least in lecture one to five. And lecture five onwards, the Blackboard is visible for autumn 2019 lectures. So uh, let me let me go to the YouTube videos and I'll show it to you what I mean by improving the So let's go to AU19 videos. Oh, oh. So I have no idea why, oh, I, maybe because of Zoom, the bandwidth is getting. Okay, so this is lecture five of autumn 2019. Uh, so I go to the video settings and this is uh, 1080, but you can go all the way up to 2160. But even with 1080 resolution, uh, oh, so it looks like this lecture, it doesn't look good. Oh, no, it does look good. So sometimes, of course, the video is blurry, but most of the time you can actually see what's being written on the board. Uh, so I don't see there is there should be any problem with the videos. And uh, these videos have been viewed by other people also in the past. So I don't know whether you are looking at the right setting for the video so that you see what's written, what's being written on the board. Of course, if your quality is, I don't know, 480p, then things are extremely blurry and there is no way you can understand what's written on the board, which you can see right now it's very blurry. And so it's difficult to understand what's written on the board. So. Make sure you play around with this video setting and uh, uh, you know use 1080p or more higher resolution in order to get a good view of what's written on the board. Uh, you know, the classroom teaching is more lively and it's more engaging. If I just upload a video lecture, it's going to be extremely boring because it will be monotonous and there are no questions, no interruptions. And uh, typically, 
if i just record a video lecture with no students attending the class it's just extremely boring because there is no interruption just like right now there is no interruption uh, it's very it, it's not a fun way to teach or learn uh yeah i have uh, mentioned go to autumn 2018 videos for the first lecture first five lectures and there it's clearly you can see what's written on the board uh you can just learn from 2019 18 or 17 you will see the list of topics within the videos so whatever we are covering so it should be fine uh this lecture will be posted online this is actually not a lecture it's just uh, going through the syllabus uh i don't have lecture notes that's why i shared professor bertsekas lecture notes uh i i don't make lecture notes so you see there is a download the lecture notes by professor bertsekas on mit ocw website uh, on convex analysis and optimization so you can download that and go through it uh Oh yes so that's a good point so yes i can give you information on what lectures are covered by each assignment so i'll make sure that i write that in the assignment box as well what topic each quiz will cover yeah so i will i will cover for each quiz and assignment i will write down uh, on carmen what all lectures it covers could we record a live zoom uh, lecture now the problem is uh if it was an in person class it would be fine but you know a live zoom lecture because i already have videos from the past years i'm not uh, recording new live zoom lectures and particularly because there are a lot of issues with uh, teaching on zoom sometimes a lecture may not get recorded sometimes the uh, there have been instances where either the zoom broke down or or something like that happened some technical issues happened because of which the lecture did not run smoothly and so i don't want to have those problems and because i already have lectures from the past years i don't want to record new lectures um i understand that many other classes are teaching this way and that's because they don't have videos from the previous years uh there is another question why can't we have lectures in the synchronous mode i can have lectures in the synchronous mode uh, the problem is most many students are international which means that they are in their own countries right now and they may or may not be able to uh uh be available at the time when the lecture is happening so even today out of 60 people 65 people who have registered for the course i see only 49 people here 40 45 or some 50 people here so it's difficult for some people to be you know it's different from an in person class right so if 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 i knew everyone is going to be in the state of ohio it's very easy to teach a course and that would be the case for an undergrad course but for a grad class where people are from all over the place it's very difficult to have synchronous lectures so this is something that uh, many people have discussed internally and everyone has to decide what they want to do because whatever works for them so i want to focus more on the project in this particular class because lectures are available online you can look at the lectures i want you to focus more on project and use that time use uh my knowledge in optimization to improve your project uh because that's going to help you in getting a job in the future uh and that's what i want to focus on in this particular class and maybe it will work maybe it will not work and this is a one off online lecture so i don't know how this will work out but in the future if uh um i'm hoping that we will have in person classes and so i don't have to go through this uh, online lecturing thing which i don't like uh any other question yes absolutely so another question is can we write our homework electronically and then upload the exported pdf yes that's what a lot of people have done in the past and i think that would be completely okay it's not a problem at all and and i have used one note for uh, a lot of my uh, previous 
work. So you can use uh, OneNote for writing your homework and then export it, export a PDF. The reason why I'm saying OneNote is because sometimes you will have MATLAB figures to add, and I'm not sure what other software you can use so that if you have a, created a figure in Python, how will you import it in some other software? But I have used OneNote and I, I feel that in OneNote you can add an image, uh, which would be a figure for some algorithm that you've run. And so it should be completely fine. Uh, you do have to submit your MATLAB codes for some of the assignments. And also for the project, you will be asked to submit the code. So make sure that you uh, comment your code or you at least write a code so that it's readable to the TA and to myself. So if there are any questions or if there is any problem in the code, we can go back and see and point out this is where, where the problem is. Um, so, yeah, but, but you can submit your homework electronically and upload the exported PDF. Um, I have, I have not used iPad specifically, so I don't know how you would add MATLAB figures, but I'm sure you can figure that out, um, uh, on your own. Any other question? All right. So it looks like there are no further questions. Uh, what I want you to do now is, uh, of course, go through the lectures. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, my next office hours are going to be Friday, 3 to 4 p.m. Um, so we can meet over the office hours and have a more one-to-one uh, -one discussion there. Uh, the other thing is, for the project topic, if you're not clear what you want to take up for project, uh, send me an email and we can figure out a time to meet and discuss uh, uh, what you want to do for the project and uh, any help you need to get to that uh, project topic. Uh, there are new questions. Uh, okay, so this course, the, the, the next question is, are we allowed to use any packet slash solvers in MATLAB? So you will be using Linprog and uh, FMinCon uh, within MATLAB, but you know, the, the goal of this course is to actually understand what happens when you actually call Linprog or FMinCon command within MATLAB. So what's the algorithm that's running in the background? And so in most of the assignments, you are actually coding the algorithm that the MATLAB would call in case you call that command. So, um, so you, you, in some cases you will use packages or solvers in MATLAB, but in most other cases, you will actually write the algorithm yourself and won't be using the inbuilt solvers in MATLAB. So midterm, I can send you midterms from the previous year. Quiz is a new thing. Uh, uh, so Carmen quiz was not, pos was not done in the earlier years because in the earlier years we had other ways of evaluating uh, folks. So I would have liked to show you the quiz, but unfortunately, in my view, you will see the answer. So now I'm going to the student view. Let me go to the assignments. I hope you can see the quiz. Take the quiz. Okay, so this is what a quiz looks like. Um, so here is a, whatever, question one is a symmetric matrix, you diagonalize it, blah, blah, blah. Which of the following answers is true and you can check mark one, two, three, or if you think this is not correct, you will check mark that. And then the second question would be, what are the eigenvalues of this matrix? And you will click something and false or true whatever, and, and this is what the quiz is going to look like. So some of them are multiple answers questions, some of them are true-false questions. 
So this one is multiple answers may be correct. Uh, here only one answer is correct. There it's just true and false. Uh, what else? Yeah, multiple answers are correct. Yeah. So this is what a quiz would look like. And there are 10 questions in this quiz and the same thing will happen for quiz two and quiz three. And all the quizzes are in the early stages of the class. Uh, and the later stages of the class, I want you to focus on assignments, midterms and project and not on quizzes. Is project individual? Yes, so project has to be done individually. Um, I'm still looking for ideas on how you can collaborate with other folks on the project. So what do you, what do I mean by collaboration? So if you have a question, you can ask other people who can help you with that problem, or you could ask me to help you with the problem. And I'm of course available through office hours and through appointment. Uh, but I would like you to also learn from each other, which is always possible in a classroom setting, but I don't know how to make it possible in an online setting. So I'm still working on that and some announcement will go out eventually. Uh, but, uh, but the project has to be done. So each person will submit their own project report. It's not a group assignment. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, so, so the action items are, I need to send you guys a midterm, a sample midterm from the past year, which I will do. Let me note it down. And I have to write for each quiz and for each assignment, I have to write which lecture that quiz or assignment is going to um, cover. So I'll do that. And also for midterms, I'll do that. Uh, as far as recording new videos is concerned, I will be recording some videos on accelerated methods, so momentum method in optimization. And uh, if there are any new topics I would like to cover, I'll let you know towards the end of the class. Uh, but for now, I'm not recording any new lectures because the lectures are already available. Um, and this will run in asynchronous mode because there are people from all over the place taking this class. Okay, uh, if there are no further questions, so good luck with this class. Uh, we will definitely meet each other at some point of time for the project as well as for assignments slash quizzes slash other things. So um, I look forward to interacting you more uh, in the next four months and wish you a wonderful uh, learning experience in this class. And uh, if you have any questions, again, my office hours will be, let me note that once again, my office hours will be Tuesday, 10 to 11 a.m., Friday, 3 to 4 p.m., all Eastern time. And the TA's office hours will be Wednesday, 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern time. So. And if you need some other time, just let me know and we can figure out a time, time, timeline to meet each other. So um, goodbye and uh, talk to you guys soon.